All right, so for the beginning of this video, remember that whatever we did in class, just skip ahead to where we stopped. Um, but anyway, um, so beginning of this, uh, the first page and actually the first like two pages of these notes are pretty much things that you already know how to do from Algebra 2 and maybe even Algebra 1. So I'm just going to go over the calculator steps real quick, all right, just to review. So um, you are going to have data that you have to put into your calculator, right? So the first thing you should probably do is clear your calculator. So when you want to do that, you got to press, sorry, this thing is, eh, I guess that's good enough. All right, so you want a second plus and then 712, right? Um, so that you can like have everything cleared. All right, so you're going to have to know how to put data in your calculator. So you're going to need to press the stat button, right? So you press stat. Um, you do number one, edit. You've just cleared everything, so there should be nothing in your list. If there are things in your list because um, you don't clear your calculator, you need to go to the top. You press clear and enter. It clears them out. Anyway, all right, so you put your lists in there. So let's just make up some numbers. Um, actually, um, let's go ahead and use the numbers on the second page. Let's just go put in four, five, six, and eight, and 12. Jump over. We need 4.2, 4.4. 5.8, 5.1, shoot, um, 5.7, okay? All right, so there's our things in our list. Now, we want to be able to look at the data to uh, go ahead and, you know, see what the heck's going on, like what does it look like? So um, you, we want to turn this stat plot on right here. So we're going to have to press blue and then that button. We want to press enter on number one and we want to turn it on. And so right now it's going to give us a scatter plot of list one and list two. And you can change these buttons to anything you want, but I'm just going to leave it like this. Now, when I, if I press zoom right now, if I press graph right now, you see all my stuff is over there. And so the calculator has a nice feature that kind of zooms in on like what you want to look at. So what we're going to do is we're going to press zoom and you basically go down to number nine. So you don't have to do nine. We're just going to press nine in the future, but that's zoom stat. So the calculator knows what's in the list and it's going to give you um, like a window that's like best for that data. All right, so press nine and there it is. Okay, so you look at this data and you're like, okay, well, you know, I think it looks kind of linear. I don't know, maybe it could be something a little bit different. It does look a little bit, a little bit of a curve to it, but you know, um, just because you know from the problem, it's, it's a line, right? A linear regression. So we're going to go ahead and make the calculator do linear regression, which you've done in algebra two and hopefully algebra one. So I'm going to quit out of here, back to my main screen. And to do a linear regression, you're going to want to press the stat button again. But this time you're going to go over to calculate. And we used to use number four. Um, so number four and number eight are really the exact same thing. It's just a matter of where the y-intercept is located. And um, Mr. Oliver tells me that in AP Stats, they like number eight better. So we're just going to use that one. And it's really the same answer. I guess it's just a matter of preference. But we'll just go with number eight. So anyway, number eight. So we have to go down and we want to store this equation of a line that it's going to give me that goes through, the, through my data in Y1. So remember, alpha trace to grab Y1. All right, and there it is and calculate. Okay, so great. So there's the equation of a line. Just be careful. This is the Y-intercept and here's your slope right there. Okay, so if you go to Y equals, the equation's in there like I told it to. And um, the plot right now is still on. So if I press graph, you can see how the line goes right through it. All right, so now because we stored that in Y1, I can, um, you know, this data was for like the age of, what is it, babies, um, the age and weeks and weight of randomly selected babies from a particular per pediatrician's office, okay? So let's say I wanna know, like, based on this data, let's, let's go ahead and like figure out, you know, what's the baby when they're 20 weeks old or something. So alpha trace, because I wanna plug 20 into Y1, parentheses and plug in 20. So that's going to plug 20 into this problem, right? So it puts a 20 right there without me having to do it. Okay. Um, obviously I could you know, go to the table to look for some stuff too, but you know, I can't, it's hard to get decimals on, on here on the side. So I mean, there is a way, but it's kind of annoying. So this is a good thing to know. All right. So let's go to the questions. Um, so basically covered the first page and um, here's our linear regression model. Um, if you do second enter, second enter, okay, that is again, I'm going to get it. So it is 3.545 plus 0.185x. So there's my equation, y equals, okay? So um, by using the linear model from part A, so um, 
this problem said to do a linear model. That's why that's why we did it. So we'll talk about some other stuff in a minute. But um, uh, it says what happens when a baby is 10 weeks old. So we basically want to plug 10 in here, right? So we want y1 of 10. And so remember our calculator can do that for us. So alpha trace, grab y1, put in 10. Okay, all things familiar to you. So 5.4, 5.395 isn't too bad. And always put a label, you know, these are like word problems, right? So this is the baby's weight in kilograms. I was gonna say pounds, that would be weird. Um, anyway, okay, um, the weight of baby is 5.3. Use the model to figure out what's the age in weeks. So now we're just kind of going backwards a little bit, right? So what we're doing here is we know the answer and we wanna know what X value made that. So we're gonna have to take 5.3 and set it equal to 3.545 plus 0.185x, right? So if we do that, let's down a little bit. All right. So I'm going to need a 5.3 minus what? 3.545 and then divide it by 0.185. And so that baby must be 9.5 weeks old. So x equals 9.5, we'll say weeks. And you know, it makes sense, right? 5.3 is like right in here, so nine weeks, okay. All right, so um, there's a thing that you do in statistics and we're gonna do it here too, but it's called residuals. So when you use a model to predict values, the model doesn't always get right on target, right? Like um, if I plugged, even though this is the data that I had, if I plug five into this equation we got or any of these numbers, I'm not always gonna get exactly that. I mean, some of them might be spot on, but actually you can see from the picture, um, actually none of them are spot on. So some are a little bit under, a little bit, or the line is a little bit under, a little bit over, a little bit over, a little bit under, okay? So it's gonna be close, but there's gonna be what's called a residual. So basically the difference between the actual value Right. and the value predicted by the model. That's the residual. So if we take the actual value minus the predicted value, that is called our residual, okay? All right, so we want our actual value. Our actual value is literally the thing that we use, our data, and then we would subtract off um, what the model tells us we are at that number, okay? All right, so we're gonna do that over here. So let's just do a couple of these. I'm gonna show you how you can do this on your calculator. So right now, um, so we're gonna try to do this for uh, five weeks old, okay? So the actual value of five weeks old is 4.4. Uh, what's it called? 4.4 uh, kilograms. And the predicted value, so I need that for my calculator. So I need Y1, oh crap, oh yeah, there it is. Y1 of um, five is 4.47. So I take my actual value, so 4.4 minus 4.47. So, you know, you can do it on here, 4.4 minus 4.47, but you can obviously the seven, the 0.07 is what di it's different by, right? And it's um, negative 0.07. So what that tells me is that this, this was a little bit higher, right? So I was a little bit over, like, so my predicted value was um, a little bit um, over what my actual value was, okay? So what's gonna happen, and if we look at this five right here, if we look at the picture, so if you press trace, I can like jump around. You see there was the five, right? So you see how the line was over, an, an, an overestimate of the actual value because the line was above it, right? And so when my, my dot is below the line, it means that my line is like overestimating for me at that point right there. So um, basically what you're saying here is that your value was below the um, model by this much. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and write what that means right here. So the predicted value and that is given to us by the model. All right, is 0 0.07, I don't know what word I just wrote right there, 
0 0.07 um, weeks because it's a matter of this number. Point oh seven, not weeks, kilograms, sorry. Um, larger than the actual value. So using the model, uh, let's say a baby was 7.5 weeks old and has a residual of negative 0.7. So what we know right there is, um, we, remember we have that our residual is going to be the um, actual minus the predicted, right? And so the residual is negative 0.7. Um, Let's see, the baby was 7.5 weeks old. So I can use my model to find the prediction. So let's do that. We need alpha trace, parentheses, 7.5, okay, and get 4.9325. Right, and then I want to know the actual value. So hopefully you can tell I'm just going to add that over there, right? So I got this number here. Let's see, I got negative 0.7 plus the last answer, right? And to get that last answer, you press second and then this decimal right here. All right, or just type it in. All right, so the actual is 4.2325, okay? All right, so moving right along. So that makes sense, right? That um, the prediction was above again and so that's why my um, residual was negative because my prediction was above where I really was and so hopefully that all makes sense. All right so we're going to go ahead and sketch the residual plot all right so I'm going to find I'm going to tell you how to find the residuals like really easily and um, so we already know this one the 4.4 was negative 0 0.07 Okay, so we don't want to have to do that calculation all the time. So what you can do in your calculator, once you've made a regression, so once you have something in here, right, once you've done something, any kind of regression, you can go here, you can press these buttons, you can press second and stat, which is list, and you see right there, number seven, that pops up. That's not usually there. And it's there now because I've done a calculation and, and made like a regression here. So press number seven and press enter. And look at that. There's our, our residuals. Um, there's that one that we just put in. So let's go ahead and put the others. Negative 0.085. And if you just move to the right, 0.145. And 0.075. And negative 0.065. Okay. So anyway, we can see that above, below, above, below, like whatever. Okay. All right, so if you make a, resi a residual plot, this is what you do. So um, your residual plot, um, you know, usually it starts with your values. And so, you know, it starts with zero and then, you know, we'll just kind of go up by, we'll just like pretend there's a little like part right here and say, okay, we're gonna start with a uh, four, right? That's our first thing. And then um, the next one is five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? All right, so what we would have is that four, our residual is negative 0 0.085. And so look at these residuals here. Hmm, they're all kind of close to, to 0.1. So we'll just call this one like negative 0 0.1, all right? And so, um, sorry. I'll just call that spot negative 0 0.1. So when we're at 4, um, negative 0 0.085. So it's a little bit above from that. And we'll call it this positive 0 0.1. Okay. All right, so about there. Um, uh, 5 was negative 0 0.07, so a little bit higher. Okay. Oh, uh, 6 was uh, 0.145. So it's up here. So 0.145 means I'm above 0 0.1, so maybe about there. Okay. Oops. Um, eight, so seven, eight 
was 0.075, so maybe about here. Okay. And 12 is negative 0.06. So 12 is negative 0.06, maybe 0.05. Here's about 6 right there. Okay, so great. But your calculator will also do this for you because you want to be able to look at the residuals like really quickly. Okay, so the next page basically tells you how to do the residuals on your calculator, but um, I'm going to show you here, so we're going to skip that page. All right, so let me clear this off. I got my data in there. I have my item calculated. So if you want to see a graph of the residuals, um, we're going to go back into the stat plot right here. So second stat plot. And I want to see a residual plot for every value of t right here. I want to see the residual, okay? So you go in there, press into it. Um, everything's already set. Before we, went, we wanted list one and list two, but now I want to keep list one, but I want all the residuals because I want like a map like we just made right here. So clear this off. And we want to go back into this button under the list and get that residual word. So second, stat, and press number seven. And you see it says residuals now, okay? So when I press graph, oh, oh wait, 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 sorry. I was in there. Um, the graph was still set to before. Um, uh, so I want to do zoom nine again. So zoom nine, because it's the plot. And there's our picture. So basically this picture pretty much matches what we just did, okay? And you press trace, you can kind of like jump around and see what it's doing. There you have it. Now, every once in a while, um, the y equals, see this is still turned on. So every once in a while, like that line is gonna like cut through because it's in, you know, it's there, but you can go like here on the equal sign and turn it off. And so if that, if you happen to see that line on your picture or the curve or whatever, now you just won't see it. I mean, we didn't see it before, but sometimes that happens, okay? All right, so let's see what we got.